Hello everyone, this is part 2 of the applying to university video. So if you remember in the last video we, I emphasised the importance of enthusiasm. So when you fill in that personal statement, just show that you are enthusiastic about what you what, what, like to study at university. Show that you are interested and that will be seen by how you write it but also the detail that you go into. And so, so after you've done the personal statement, you've completed the, uh, the UCAS application, from quite a lot of universities that might be the almost the final step um, and you would then have to wait until, the, um, until they've considered your um, application to then see if you've got, uh, if, to see if they'll then offer you a place. But for some um, universities like Cambridge, you may be required to do an interview. Um, so Cambridge interviews are normally done in the December um, December winter time of uh, of the year, but before um, you do the Cambridge in, uh, interview, you have what is known as the SAQ, or the um, Supplementary Admissions Questionnaire, and that is that is something really specific to Cambridge. Um, so, not or no no really other university will let's say do this. Or if if they do, they'll have it will be something specific for them. But for the SAQ for Cambridge, that is just a series of further questions that, and just further details that they need to for, to help with their help with the application process. One of the uh, sections on there does ask you if you want to to write a smaller uh, personal statement that's specific for Cambridge. So maybe like you know why you think Cambridge is the right university, why you think you should be able to study uh, X at uh, Cambridge. But not. That is more specific for Cambridge, and that needs to be done by that. You'll get information about that after October the fifteenth, the deadline for UCAS, and that will be due in October the twenty second, which is a week later. Um, or rough, depend on obviously how how the dates fall in the calendar. Um, but um, quite a lot of, for for Cambridge and for quite a few other universities that you'll have this interview. Um, so yes, the information I'll give you will be quite specific to Cambridge, but the advice I give you very much applicable to um, interviews at other universities, uh, as well as potentially interviews in general to some extent. So, so like I said, um, uh, for me, I had my interview in uh, the first week or two of uh, uh, December, if I can remember correctly. Um, for me, I had two interviews uh, and what is known as the Cambridge uh, Law Test. So, for uh, the Cambridge Law Test, so, so some subjects you might be required when you're down at Cambridge or um, at other universities potentially to do a test. Um, and it's really it's just a way, a way in which they can assess, um, you know, for example, mine was the law test. It's a way in which they can assess your skills and how you approach certain questions. And that gives them a good taste of kind of like how you write, how you communicate your ideas, how you think, how you approach certain things. So mine was an essay question and so really looking at how I approach essay questions. What kind of points do I give? How do I back those points up? And uh, what evidence do I use or what you know, how do I structure my overall essay? So so at Cambridge you might very much depend on your uh, uh, depend on the subject you might get a test due. And the that applies to other universities as well. So, even those who are not doing interviews. So, for example, uh, Durham. I didn't have. Uh, I applied to Durham. Didn't have an interview, but I had the LNAT. Um, so there might be tests for quite a lot of the universities. Oxford does the LNAT uh, as well. So some interviews, regardless if they're uh, so universities, regardless if they do interviews or not, might have a test for you to be to, to do either before the interview. Um, before the interview or during the interview, if there is an interview, um, at so at, at Cambridge, you will, uh, I had uh, like I said two interviews, and they were done by two. Each of them had two um, members of the law staff. If that, um, but that could vary, and um, doesn't mean it'll always be two for. If you for an interview that you go to, it could be more, it could be less. It just depends on what the university or college that you are at decides. Um, the interviews are often, I think they were about an, 
hour, but I can't say for absolute certain. Again, the time might vary depending on what they wish to explore and what the questions that they want to ask. The first interview that I had was um, more what the things what what they aim to do with the interviews is they want to get to see how you, again like how you communicate your ideas, how you think. They want to see it's an opportunity for them to see you in person and see how you think, how you engage with the subject, how enthusiastic are you about this uh, subject. And so the first interview, quite a lot of the, some of the questions were application questions, so where I needed, they would give me a scenario and I would have to apply my thinking about what, how the law would fit, you know, what, you know, what would be right for that particular legal scenario. Um, Obviously, for law, they're not expecting you to have, they're not really expecting you to have mountains of law at, available. What they what they want to see, and uh, to judge everyone on that equal footing, is how you think. It's more and more about how you think, how you answer, try to answer that question, rather rather than necessarily how much, uh, for example, the law you know, or how much history you know, or how much politics you know. It's about you know, obviously, if you've got that knowledge through your research or doing reading the newspaper. That's going to help you, but it's oh, oh, but it's also, but they're looking for the skills, they're looking for yeah, how you think and how you process ideas, um, because they want to test you know they want to test all the things really the skills that you're probably going to be um, developing at, at university. So you know I had questions where I was given opinions, I had questions where I was given, and you know I was applying to a scenario, and that's two areas of the law you know, quite, you know, heavily fe you know, featured at university, analysing the law, applying the law. Um, so it's, you know, so one bit of advice I was, you know, like I said with the personal statement, is, you know, show your enthusiasm, show that you, uh, that you want to study the subject, that you're interested in it, and they'll see that by the, how you a answer the questions, they'll see that by the detail that you give, you know, like with the personal statement, give, you know, see, interviews will have more opportunity to give detail, but give that, make sure you're giving detail answers and, you know, show that you're, you know, you're engaging with that, uh, with the questions, engaging with the subject. Um, you know, one of the other advice is listen carefully. So, you know, um, when they're asking questions, listen carefully. If you don't understand the question, don't be afraid to ask, could you repeat that? Or could you say that in a different way? Or could you, yeah, you know, you know, could you reword your question? There's, you know, don't be afraid to ask that. You know, they want to get, they want to get those answers uh, and those detailed responses from you. So if they can find a way of helping you to do that, then they will. So you know, but listen carefully, and you know, think you know about the answers. Um, what you want with a Cam especially with Cambridge interviews, uh, with all the interviews really, is you won't end up having that discussion, and that you know bounce enough ideas between you and whoever's interviewing you. And you, you don't want to be sitting there in silence and then giving an answer every so often. You know, because that's not going to help them, that's not going to allow you to show off your skills, your understanding, your enthusiasm. So you, you need to say, don't sit in silence. Yes, you, also you will, might need, you'll need to think about answers and, you know, spend some time, and that's okay. Think about it, don't rush into your answers. But also, don't sit in silence. You know, they can, they can only really see you think by how you speak and and what you actually say, and they can't try and guess what's in your mind. Um, and and you know, they need to see how you think by the answers that you give. So listen carefully, give in your and just engage, create that discussion. You know, one of the things I loved about the interview was that it ended up becoming a discussion, and that's quite important when you go to university in your you know whichever university you go to if you you know you'll go you'll have those discussions you'll have those uh you know whichever subject you you do you'll have discussions you'll have uh you might even have argument uh, arguments uh, like about different ideas you know if it's whether it's linked to politics law you know you know so having that ability to discuss ideas at the interview was a fant was just fantastic um so yeah, that is very important. You know, again with the personal statement, you know, be honest, and you know, make sure that obviously beforehand that you've you know if you've put something in your personal statement that you've read, and uh, that you've read something, you know, make sure you've actually read it, so that in case they ask you because they might ask a question, what did you think about that? What did did you learn from that? And obviously, if you 
haven't read it, then you're going to be in a very difficult situation. And so one of the advice I'd give before doing the interview is that is to make sure that you've read your personal statement. They might pick on something from your personal statement and ask you to explore that, to expand on it, to give more examples of it. Um, so read your personal statement. They might not. They might ask no questions. But you know, it's important that you read your personal statement. Remind yourself of what you wrote because it might. It'll be in a while, possibly since you uh, since you've looked at it. Remind you what you wrote and just have little maybe notes about if they you know about how you could expand those should you be asked about them in the interview. Um, another advice I would uh, give would be, you know, practice uh, before the interview. Try and practice and uh, uh, do a mock interview with uh, you know either a friend teacher, staff member, whoever, you know, whoever you feel comfortable, preferably someone actually you don't necessarily know, because in the interview, you're not going to have, you're not going to know that person very well, so try and get maybe, say, maybe more of a get a staff member that you haven't really spoken to a lot, or you don't, you know, because that be, it'll make it more realistic, you know, try and do it in more, in a, you know, it, where it's quiet, you know, where it's more realistic, because the more realistic you make it, the better it's going to uh, uh, benefit you. So for me, I had mine with a staff member who I'd never really spoken to before, uh, but he offered his services, and it was you know it was a fantastic uh, a chance to you know have you know to practice and to you know, kind of build up some of that confidence because it will be it is, will be done, and, and I you know everyone will respond to them differently. The key you know but the key thing is to be calm, you know be collected, and just you know make sure that you are, um you know just. Don't be afraid um, to you know stop and just reflect on an answer. Don't worry if you make a mistake. You know, in the, you know, they are you know they'll you know they'll give they won't push you by, by as if as means of giving you all the answers, but they'll give you a little nudge and it'll help so that you can then go right. Okay, that's why I need to. Ah, I see what you what you what you mean. Oh, I see how to answer this question now. You know, they're not gonna. Tr you know, the interview is not there to catch you out. They're not there to try and um, you know make you feel that's not that's not what they're trying to do what they're trying to do is to see how to see how enthusiastic you are about the subject they want to see uh you know about how you think so if they can you know they'll ask challenging questions the questions will become challenging interviews but um you know it's there to obviously it's you know you're getting that experience of kind of like the questions and style questions you might get in uni um you know but it's overall there to help you to learn to think and you know to engage in things that you might not have otherwise engaged with before. But yeah, just remember that you know um, they're not looking for perfection. What they're looking for is your enthusiasm for the subject that you're being interviewed upon, and uh, how you think and how you engage with the questions. So don't worry if you make a mistake. You know, just calm yourself down. Take you know take your time. But also, like I said, in, you know engage with the questions and you know discuss things. You know, you know, create that discussion uh, like environment where you're bouncing ideas off off each other, so to speak. Um, what what for my uh, interview, I had uh, one of the interviews anyway, the second one. Um, yeah, I had what was known as pre-interview reading. So you might get potentially depending on the subject that you do, uh, the course that you do, you might be asked to read something for about fifteen minutes uh, before the interview, and then. In the interview, you'll, uh, you know, you'll get questions based upon that. You know, for mine, I think it was a court judgment of uh, from a case I can't quite remember. Um, but don't panic if you know it means and you don't quite understand it. You know, you, you know, make sure you sure you make notes, quick notes during uh, the pre-interview reading. And if you're unsure about anything, you know, there's no harm in asking. I'm sure they will be able to give you that little push, not the not not a full push by giving you the answer, but that little nudge uh, to help you to then be able to give those detailed answers but again show your enthusiasm show your interest and allow them to see how you think how you approach this uh, this reading you know often read, it'll be reading that you something you've never really looked at or something an area of the, of the law or politics that you're not so familiar with um you know that's what they want that's what they're looking for they're not mostly for protection for, uh, for, 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 for perfection even trying <laughs> But rather, they are looking for how you think and how you engage. Um, so, you know, once the interview is done, you will probably, for Cambridge, uh, uh, and since you'll either be, obviously, get an offer, uh, or you might, straight away, uh, from the college that you chose, or you might be put in what's known as the winter pool. And the winter pool is where, for example, your application was good, you know, all the parts of the application 
uh, you know, we're good, and the one off you, the college wants off you a place, but there isn't enough uh, space, and so they put you in the winter pool, and that gives the chance for other colleges to pick, uh, to have a look, and choose you for their college. And um, so for me, I I applied to Christ, uh, I was put in the winter pool, and that's how I am now uh, going to be a member of Homerton, and uh, because they chose my um, application. Um, from amongst uh, from amongst the wind the winter pool. Um, just to make it clear in your that your interview in your personal statement, for, certainly for um, you know for all universities really are just one of our pieces in the overall application for uh, jigsaw. You know, so you know don't panic if you in your personal statement you don't you want to show that your personal statement as is good, um, because you know your, your personal statement is just one part. You know if you apply to Cambridge. No, you'd have your, you would have your ES grades. You would have your personal statement. You would have your interview. You would have your references. So there's loads of different parts, and what you know they're gonna do is consider you as a whole, and what overall picture you get. You know, one thing is not gonna drive, and you know, be the driving factor for the decision that's made. So just re just remember, uh, remember that. Um, yeah, and Aussie after that, if you get an offer, that is fantastic. If you don't, don't Aussie be down. Understandably, you'll be downhearted, um, but you just you pick yourself up and you go right. Okay, what are any universities did offer me a place? How can I make sure now that I mint you know keep that place at that particular uh, university? Um, so I hope this video has been helpful. You know, like I said in the last video, do your research, ask you know the questions to the staff, and they'll be able to give you a lot more information uh, and point you in the right direction so that you know what you need to do. Um, for for the application process i do wish you all uh, the best of luck for those who are, uh, are applying for university this year and i'm sure you'll do a, fant a fantastic job if you enjoyed this video which i hope i would like you to hope you do <laughs> um like comment share the video and um, subscribe and um, the video so you can you know you know allow hopefully more people to um you know, get a little bit in insight, and also just get that experience of like sh of uh, student life at Cambridge, as I will be eventually doing some vlogs of my life, uh, you know, of the weeks uh, that I am there. Um, you know, follow me on Facebook, and I shall hopefully see you in the next video, which I definitely hope will be an interview, uh, I'm sorry, even a video, um, of um, what I'll be bringing to Cambridge. So I shall see you all later. <laughs>